Hello YouTube and hello fellow students. Um, a very huge apology for what's currently happened in regards to my YouTube videos. Um, as far as um, some people are aware that have been dropping comments onto my channel, um, I've been trying to keep you updated as much as I can. My graphics card decided to die uh, when I opened up the division. For some reason my SLI cards decided to just die on me, um, which means I had to buy myself um, a new graphics card. Um, and on doing so, I, I bought a new graphics card, which is a very nice card, and um, it decided not to work. Um, so I had to actually format my whole machine, uh, which is, as you probably know, a real pain to fix. Um, so I formatted that, um, and then I found out I didn't back up our YouTube tutorial series. So I had to redo um, pretty much all the level stuff that we've already done. Uh, so I had to backtrack myself. Uh, so you might notice some things have changed in regards to level design, um, that's slightly changed. Um, however, the blueprints and stuff, I've tried to keep exactly how they, they are in the YouTube series. Um, but if there are any small technicalities that you can't remember, um, or something might have changed just a little bit in regards to maybe names um, of variables or anything that we might have created, uh, then please let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll see if I can backtrack or update you if anything has changed. However, welcome back. Um, I am now back to continue with the series. Um, I should be d dropping a series pretty much every day now till we finish our, our 2D side scroller series. Um, and today, as you can see, we're going to be creating uh, some 2D sprite animations um, today. Uh, we're actually going to create a coin system, which we already had um, in our previous HUD that we created. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to make that work. Um, and see if we can get that functioning. But before we can actually make that functionality happen, we need to know how to make some animation just to make our game look a little bit more nicer um, than having just static things on our screen, which we already had. So without further ado, uh, let's go back to our main screen. Um, and just to show you maybe a few things might have changed, um, I think all of these are the same. Uh, the blueprints, we had um, the health system, which was the heart. I had to change the design of the heart, so it might not look the same. Um, our pumpkins that we had, again, probably changed. The HUD is maybe a little bit different. Uh, I think in our one we had a, a red bar, mine's just blue. Um, so it doesn't really matter, blue, red, it's all the same thing. We just change it down here in the style. Um, and we had this number of coins and coins here where we're going to start putting our numbers into, but not in this series. As, as you know, this is all about animation um, and creating that animation for our set. So we have got pretty much all the same stuff. The sprites, I think I might have just changed the layer a little bit. For example, our sheets here. Um, so our Photoshop sheet um, is all there. Um, and our tiles, as you can see, I've, I've made a really ugly heart and a very ugly pumpkin because obviously I had to catch everything up. So I didn't want to spend too much time making them um, in regards to what we were working with. So today um, is all about creating animation. Um, and it's really easy. Um, Unreal has made making sprite animations very, very easy for the the public that are using the program. Uh, I normally say to my students when I'm teaching them, it's pretty much a, a three-step process um, of creating these animations, uh, but they are, as I say, very, very easy. They're, they're not hard to do. So without me chatting away for too long, you guys have been eager to wait for one of my, one more, another one of my videos, so let's get straight into it. So what we're going to do is in our sprite folder, we're going to create ourselves a new folder. And we're actually going to name this folder animation. Um, again, it's very easy. It's easy for us if we name things correctly and we put things in the right locations that we need. Otherwise, it starts getting messy and, and we don't really want that to happen. So we'll keep that all clean. So what we are going to do is we're going to create ourselves an animation. Now, um, I did find one on the internet. I didn't want to make one, um, and which is these coins here. I'll link this in the description. I don't know if this belongs to anyone, but Again, apologies if it, if it does. I mean, if anyone picks it up and it is this, please let me know and I will change it. Um, I will credit it though in, in the description, but um, I will be using these coins. It just saves me making them, um, especially for myself and for you guys watching. You can quite easily grab this. Um, so this will be in the description if you want to grab these coins, by all means do so, because um, we're going to use it for this series. Just to give you a heads up, it is 32, because remember our sprites we are using are 32 by 32. Um, so the height here is 32. Um, and then the length is depending on how many coins you've actually got in the animation. Now, how animation works is that it works in a frame by frame basis, depending on what pictures you had. So if you had to think about good old Disney days, uh, how they used to do the animations of their um, kids programs or things like that, um, is basically artists used to just draw still pictures. 
um, and they just draw many, many, many frames um, of the same style picture um, to make a character walk. It's the same thing in our 2D platforms that each one of them represents a simple image. So i.e. these coins here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And each one of these are a frame process of our coins. So you can see there's the start of the coin and you can see it, it makes some small rotation um, with the coin itself then comes back to its natural state. And that's how um, animation works. Depending on how many of the same object you have, it's just done differently graphically wise. So I'm just gonna save this image. Uh, let's just save it into, as you can see, I've got nothing now. Um, I had to delete everything. So I'm just gonna save this into my project. I've got a thing called a source file. I'm not sure how you've done yours, um, but I'm actually gonna go into, I'll make a new folder here actually. Inside here, animation. And I'm actually just gonna put it in here and I'm just gonna rename this to coins. Just so it's easier for me to remember. Okay. Um, and that's what we've been doing all the time in Unreal is, whoops, see, I didn't want to open up that, is in our animation, so in our sprites animation bit here, I'm just gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call that coins because that's what we wanna work with. We wanna work with these coins. And I'm gonna quite simply drag the coins PNG into my file location or my explorer as it's called. Okay, that's in. What we can do is do the whole process of what we did with our sprite sheets is we apply our paper 2D. So we right click on our um, uh, you could call this a sheet, I suppose. You could um, apply the paper 2D settings and you can see it then removes that black background that we don't want um, and it makes it obviously transparent. Uh, hence why it's a PNG will make it transparent. If we open that up, we can see we've got all the coins that we require, all with the transparent background in, in the back. However, I can't just make an animation out of this. I actually have to split each one up. Now, depending on what sprite sheet you download, it could be easy. If on others, it becomes a real pain. I do hope this one's not too difficult. So let's right click on the coins, go to Sprite Actions, and we're going to extract the sprites. And let's just have a quick look. Oh, that's quite nice. So we can see with the auto extract mode, it's actually captured each one of the coins individually. And this is what we want. We want it to capture each individual piece, okay? If this wasn't the case, uh, we could have come into the problem where I showed you with the grid, where if I change that to 32, we could break that up. If, okay, so that's a big if. So if there was an issue that um, it didn't pick it out automatically, that might have had to be an option. However, in some cases, you might get a line that will go through it, then you definitely don't want to use that sprite sheet because that will cause a big, big problem because it's going to split them into pieces and, and that's something you don't really want to happen. As long as these um, yellow boxes contain the whole object, that's fine by us. That's okay. I'm just going to stick with auto because I like how it's, it's crunched these ones down quite nicely. Okay. So it's going to extract each one of them. Okay. And you can, as you can see, it's pulled each one out as an individual sprite. If I decided to throw this sprite onto my scene, you can see that it's just a very static object. All right. And that's what we had with this, uh, uh, as you can see, it's got collision. Um, but you can see my ugly pumpkins changed and the, the you know, the damage system is still working and the health system is also working. But we want the actual coin to animate, not to just stay very static because it looks very boring and, and that you don't want something boring, you know, for your end users to look at. And to make the animation is very, very, very easy. You're going to select the very first coin. And if you hold shift on the keyboard and select your end one, it's going to select every single coin that you've got. Okay. And all we do now, and this is how easy it is, you right click and we're going to create a flip book. Now, if you had to think about a flip book or a book in general, if you had to draw so many pictures on each page and you had to flick through the book pages, it would make an animation. And Unreal's come with the same concept that it's going to turn this into a book. And basically each page of the book has got a coin per se. So let's create ourselves a flip book. Um, and I'm going to call this FP, so, uh, so FB for flipbook. I remember we name everything beforehand. Underscore coin. All right, and as you can see, the animation starts playing from its beginning spray all the way to the end, to here. Okay. However, we can change a few properties in regards to this coin. 
we could double click on the coin and we can get the idea of what's flip book looks like. We can see that we can add keyframes. We don't want to do that because we have got our keyframes here. They've automatically synced into our system. Okay. We've also got frames per second. Now this is 15 frames a second. All right. So if you had to think about how many frames at the moment, we've got one, two, three, four. Um, actually, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight frames currently. Um, but it's actually playing 15 frames a second. If I change that to eight frames a second, you can see every second, one, two, three, four, the coin then slows down, obviously depending on um, your game type. Now, most people like their games at 30 frames a second, as you could imagine. Um, everyone likes, or actually they're like 60 FPS, so frames per second. You can see how quick that coin will then rotate at 60 FPS. Um, that the eye would see. Now, you're definitely not going to have it running that fast. I mean, you could slow it down um, by moving these if you liked. Um, you could then slow it down just a wee bit. But I don't really like fiddling with this because uh, that's by second, as you can see. Um, one second, two second, three second, four second, five second, six second. Um, I normally just drop um, the rate of this um, and I just normally keep it at 15 um, in this example. Now imagine if you had loads and loads and loads and loads of frames. Obviously, depending on how many frames you have will depend on how many frames you want to go at a second, which is very important because if I had, for example, 100 frames of one coin, but was playing at 15 frames per second, this animation will go really, really, really slow. Whereas in this case, we've only got seven frames at 15 frames per second. So it is a decent speed because it is a lower value to high. If it was a high value to low value, that's completely different. Okay, so for example, this video that's being recorded is at 30 frames per second. All the mouse movements and things that you'll see on the screen would be at 30 frames per second. So technically the frames here are being affected by the recording. I know, crazy, right? It's a bit like Inception. But if you had to do this at home and look on your screen, it'll look completely different on your screen compared to mine, okay? So you can see all the keyframes here, they are here. Um, all these little keys that we've got going on here. Uh, we don't need really need to go into detail on each one of them, but they are all the sprites that we have. They automatically got bought in. So we need to worry about that. They have got the default material. Um, I'm gonna show you how to fiddle with this um, a little bit um, when we look at uh, the character shooting uh, and things like that. Um, and we can also have collisions. So if we wanna have first frame collision, so there, or a, or the or every single frame has a collision. We could do that, but um, we'll set that up manually um, inside a blueprint, so we don't really need to do that. So we can save our project, or, or sorry, save this flipbook. And what we can do now is we can quite simply just drag this coin onto the screen, and you can see it acts like an animation on our display. So if I play, you can see that animation working here on our screen. And that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna go. We're gonna look more um, into creating these flip books because I think what we're gonna start looking at is adding characters. Um, so get a sprite sheet of a character, put them in, uh, do like a walking movement, a running movement, a jumping movement. All of those are flip book creations. So this gives you a very um, beginner's idea um, on how these flip books work. Um, and as you can see, I can now run through this flip book because we turned the the collision off. So you can, it, it won't affect us um, when we walk through the coin itself. So that pretty much brings us to um, the idea of how we use uh, flipbooks, a very basic tutorial, um, but it gives you a good start of adding coins or anything that you want to start putting into the project itself. What we're going to look at next in our next tutorial, uh, we'll be adding a number count um, to our coins. So every time you collect the coin, it will add one uh, to the coin collection. Um, and we could probably start adding things like live counts and stuff like that as well um, on later series. Thank you very much. I'm Wayne. It was nice to be back again. I'm Again, I'm very sorry for the very long delay, obviously, with graphic cards and formatting and, and all the pain. Um, however, I'll see you in the next episode where we'll start looking at doing our whole coin collection. Again, thank you very much. I'm Wayne. I'll see you again in our next episode. Goodbye.